Hi! Welcome to this part of my review featuring the Eventide role-playing game. If you haven't seen the other parts of my review featuring this post-apocalypse role-playing game that has options to play it as a solo experience or even as a co-op experience as well, almost any game that can be played solo can be played without a game master, but you can also play it with other players. So please check out the playlist in the description below. This time we are going to talk about Vehicles of the Waste. So, vehicles are rare in the new world, but not unheard of. While the majority of wanderers travel on foot or horseback, there are a few who are lucky enough to have the power of a vehicle at their disposal. There are different vehicle types. You have motorbikes, quad bikes, small cars, large cars and war rigs. Players are free to customize their vehicles in any way that seems reasonable and appropriate to the game and setting. Many wanderers mount weapons and special defenses on their vehicles. Players can track their vehicle's statistics using a vehicle sheet. In addition to the obvious differences in terms of size and number of passengers, each vehicle type has a different number of health points and a different cost. You have a table explaining these details, the health points, the cost, the capacity, the type of vehicle. Health points represent how much damage a vehicle can take before it is broken down or destroyed. Cost is the price in shards it will cost to buy a vehicle from a trader, if you are lucky enough to find a trader with a vehicle to sell. The vehicle sheet is well structured and organized, so it's going to be very easy for you to keep track of the name of the vehicle, the owner, the type, the capacity, the description, current health, maximum health, armor, material, conditions, fuel, cargo, and any weapons or mods. Now, when it comes to vehicle armor, due to their stronger construction and design, vehicles are much harder to damage than regular enemies in Eventide. Vehicles have armor values based on the material they are built from, to reflect this. In combat, the armor test will take place whenever a vehicle is successfully attacked, in exactly the same way as during regular non-vehicle combat. The player rolls a dice pool based on the vehicle's armor value and subtracts incoming damage by the total number of successes. If a player attacks an enemy vehicle, the player attempts the armor test for the enemy. When acquiring or building a vehicle for your sessions, you use a table to determine the armor value of the vehicle, along with the change it has on the vehicle's cost. Now concerning vehicle damage, Vehicles take damage from weapons and the environment, just like humans and creatures do. Damage is subtracted from a vehicle's health points. Once a vehicle has taken half of its total health points in damage, it is broken down. Broken down vehicles can no longer operate normally and need to be repaired before they can be driven again. Once a vehicle has taken damage equal to its health point total, it is destroyed. Vehicles that are destroyed cannot be repaired again and are only useful as scrap. Now concerning weapons and modifications, wanderers can mount any weapons or pieces of equipment onto their vehicle that they choose. Mounting a weapon or piece of equipment does not increase its cost. Mounting weapons to a vehicle makes them easier to use when in vehicle combat, of course. Players should be creative here. You should come up with your dream apocalyptic vehicle. If you can imagine a modification or any exciting addition to the vehicle, discuss it with the Game Master. The Game Master decides whether a modification is possible and how it will work in the game world. Of course, you can handle this in any way that you like when you are playing solo or co-op. So if you wanted to mount chainsaws at the side of your vehicle, you can do that. Some example vehicle modifications include a ram bar. A large reinforced bar allowing the driver to, within reason, ram the vehicle into an obstacle and not take any damage. Maybe you want to mount a rear turret. A turret with a seat where weapons can be mounted and operated. Or maybe you want to set up a flamethrower. Now, when it comes to driving tests, when performing a complicated driving stunt, such as ramping your vehicle off an obstacle or expertly steering away from danger, the Game Master can ask the player to perform a driving test. Driving tests work the same as all other tests in Eventide, with a driving test dice pool being built from survival plus driving. Always keep in mind that vehicles in the wasteland are a rare commodity. 
and their price reflects this. While many powerful tribes and groups may have vehicles at their disposal, for an average dweller of the wastes, it's a far more challenging asset to acquire. Vehicles are only available to purchase from vendors in larger settlements, and often the characters will be limited to what stock the vendor has available. When it comes to buying vehicles, you usually have to take what you can get. Now concerning fuel, this is a precious resource of course, in the wastelands. Each vehicle has a fuel tank, which is used to track the amount of fuel the vehicle has in reserve. After 3 hours of driving, which is approximately 150 kilometers, the Game Master can tell the players to erase the topmost available fuel slot, representing fuel that has been used on the journey. If the vehicle ever runs out of fuel, then the vehicle cannot be driven until at least one fuel slot is filled again. Replenishing fuel slots has variable costs depending on the vehicle type. Remember that fuel is rare, so finding a vendor with stock available is quite uncertain. Now concerning vehicle combat, engaging in combat while in a moving vehicle is common in Eventide. Generally speaking, if you got a vehicle, then you've got a handful of dangerous and jealous thugs trying to take it off your hands. Combat turns and rounds work as normal when engaging in vehicular combat. Players each still get to take a turn and perform two actions. If a player attempts to use a weapon while in a moving vehicle, the difficulty of the attack roll is increased by two. When attacking from inside a stationary vehicle, then the difficulty of the attack roll is increased by one. If the player is using a weapon securely mounted onto the vehicle, then the difficulty of the attack roll is unmodified. Now, when it comes to being attacked, enemies can choose to target a player directly with their attack or to attack the vehicle instead. When you are within a car, you are considered in partial cover and may add the corresponding one die to your evade test. If you fail the evade test, you roll for armor and take damage as normal. If you successfully pass the evade test, then the attack against you has failed, but it may have accidentally hit your vehicle. If any of the dice in your successful evade test show 1s or 2s, your vehicle is successfully hit instead. If this happens, you roll an armor test using the vehicle's armor and apply any damage to the vehicle. If your vehicle is being attacked directly and you are driving, then make a vehicle evade test to see if the attack is successful. In this vehicle evade test, you roll using survival plus driving. If the vehicle evade test fails, then the attack is successful. You roll an armor test using the vehicle's armor and apply any damage to the vehicle. And this concludes this part of the review. In the next part, we are going to take a look at the creatures that you can encounter in this setting. As you can see, vehicles, they are quite interesting because they are very easy to incorporate into combat, into exploration, but at the same time you have that customization, that capacity of modifying the vehicle, of creating your dream machine. So I think there is an excellent balance when it comes to a simulation of the vehicle itself, but there is also that streamlining for ease of play, so that you can focus exclusively on the action. Thank you for watching this part of the review, and thank you so much to those of you that have been supporting the channel by sending drive through RPG gift certificates. If anyone else wants to further support the channel, the information on how to do that will be in the description below. Once again, thank you, and see you later!